Happy Sunday afternoon. This is Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel coming at you. The title of this episode, I entitled it Good News on the Horizon for Tennessee with a question mark. Who am I talking about? You probably guessed it before you even come on here. I'm talking about David Sanders Jr. Depending on the publication you look at, he can be ranked anywhere from second to sixth according to your main four publications, Rivals on 3 ESPN 24-7, in no particular order there. But he is a consensus five-star. He is a consensus top six player in the country. He is the big fish, so to speak, that is left on Tennessee's board. He's the big fish. You put a bow on this recruiting class when you get David's, if when you get David Sanders Jr., in the fold. Before you get into that, make sure you hit the thumbs up, you like, you share the content, and uh, if you have not and you like the content, hit that subscribe button as well. I will link uh, links for Patreon memberships of the channel. I need to get those into the description of the channel. My uh, boss that I have here informed me earlier, they're not in the description of the channel. Get that fixed later on. So that is to help support the channel and go back into it. But uh, David Sanders Jr. announces Saturday, I've seen different times. So it's we're gonna say give or take one o'clock. I've seen 12:30, I've seen 115 listed on it as well. The House of Orange is going to go live on that announcement on Saturday. I hope you'll be here with me. Uh, I know there's competition out there in that regards. I that's fine. We're just uh it's something I want to cover. I've talked about this recruitment. Uh one of my big things I want to talk about on this channel because I've followed it for over 20 years. Is Tennessee football recruiting. So, you know, trying to slowly put more of an emphasis on that as we go along. But it's believed to be Tennessee, Ohio State, Nebraska, Georgia as the top four. I've seen somebody on 24-7 ask, this come from another video apparently, that apparently Sanders was wearing Ohio State gloves this week. What does that mean? What does that mean is a big question. Is it strange for recruits to wear gloves of a school they're not going to recruit to, or going to commit to. No, it's not. It's common. We've heard, we've seen it numerous times over the year where guys have had Tennessee gear. They've had those gloves when they've done this that have formed the T or what have you, and then they never committed to Tennessee. This is not odd at all. It's not, it's not uncommon at all for it to happen, and I would look nothing into that either. Crystal ball projections coming in. Normally the one – People look for the the Fong Bong, the Fong Bomb, Steve Wilfong, 24-7 sports, or uh, I'm, I'm sorry, on three, not 24-7, Steve Wilfong on three sports. People pay attention to that one a whole lot. Now, I will say this, the, 20, the Tennessee mods have been pretty consistent. They, they will never ruin a kid's moment, all right? But you can read the tea leaves with them. Austin Price, Ryan Callahan, these guys who cover it, you know, just to name a couple. And I know there's more. I know there's more. So that's the two off the top of my head. They continue to say, I like where Tennessee's at. Tennessee is in a good spot with it. They don't guarantee the recruit. It is recruiting. So you never know anything until it is said and done. That is a fact of the matter. The only thing that is for sure in recruiting is the unsure. Steve Wilfong put in his crystal ball. Tennessee, Anna Adams, 24-7. She had hers on Clemson for a long time. Of course, Clemson's been out of this one for a while. I saw where she put her crystal ball projection in on Tennessee here uh, within the last few days as well. Tom Loy talked about how he felt, I think his projection, I know he uh, said he, the people he's talked to at Tennessee feels good about their chances with him. Now, from what I've seen, Ohio State mods are still – they're not conceding. They're not conceding this one. And I, and I think it's smart not to concede anything, not to assume he's going to pick them. But to me, everything, this goes back to me like in the Chaz Lanier recruitment. Any of you guys that followed me with basketball, how much I was talking about that Chaz Lanier recruitment when he entered the portal. Now, David Sanders initially was believed to go to Clemson when it was going to be all said and done. He visited Clemson. Tennessee's out recruited him. Tennessee has out-recruited Clemson. What Tennessee's doing, and I don't think it's as simple as this comes down to NIL. He's going to get NIL money any of these schools he goes to. 
I've seen it said that you'd be surprised how many times players do not choose the highest NIL offer. You know, there are some, they're going where the money is. I think it's a small percentage that do that, though. I really do. I think it's a very small percentage that go to the highest bidder. I think players look at your a guy like David Sanders has taken so many visits to be sure. Where has he always visited anytime he goes out on visits? Tennessee. He's been to Tennessee more than anywhere. His final visit was to Tennessee. He went to Nebraska to see them one more time. On the way back in, flew back to Charlotte, drove back to Knoxville. You can't tell me that's a courtesy visit. All right. You fly back, you drive back, and so on. You guys can put it all together. For me, I wouldn't say it's a formality. Like I said, to me, nothing is ever for sure in recruiting. There's still, what, six days until that announcement. Pretty close to when I'm recording this video right now. It's almost six days to the T that he's going to make that announcement. Right now, for me, I think when it's all said and done, the relationships. Here's something I think people are underestimating. This last visit that David Sanders Jr. had to Knoxville. Four classes of quarterbacks were there recruiting him. Nico Iamaliava, Jake Merklinger, George McIntyre, Faison Brandon. All four guys were on campus. You cannot sit here and tell me that's a coincidence that they were all there on that weekend. Of course, Faison Brandon committed to Tennessee on August 3rd. George McIntyre's been in the boat for a while. Jake Merklinger's on campus now. Let me tell you, Jake Merklinger is not going to lay down when Nico leaves Tennessee. And of course, Nico's there. From what I've read, Nico is one of the best recruiters on that team, making guys, some of these offensive linemen who've gotten in the boat have talked about how Nico was checking on them, making them feel wanted. He wanted them on his side with it. I think people are underestimating the fact that there were four classes of elite quarterbacks recruiting David Sanders Jr., wanting him to protect them on that offensive line. I, I think it's an understated point in all of this. When it's all said and done, when that announcement's made on Saturday, I'm feeling very confident it'll be David Sanders Jr. picks Tennessee. But like I said, with recruiting, you never know until it's over. There's still more time. You can bet these other teams are not going to give up on it. But for me, I just think based on the number of times he's visited, he's a guy who doesn't talk much to these websites and stuff. Uh, you know, they interview his mom a bit. She talks a little bit about what they're doing. But it's a family. I think it's a well, I think it's a well-grounded family. I think they've done their due diligence. And I, I think they've been really thorough in this process and seeing all the pros, all the cons of each of these schools and weighing it out. And, uh, you know, when you make that case, you make that point to get to Tennessee each time. You know, we'll see. We'll see where it winds up in the end. I like Tennessee's chances on Saturday. I hope you'll continue to like the content on the channel. If you guys got suggestions, uh, you know, it, it's kind of the it's an everything school. This is going to be an everything channel: football, baseball, basketball, Lady Vols basketball, Lady Vols softball. Uh, you know, any other events of importance I think would be important to ring in here as well. I am going to uh, work softball into the equation as we get toward that springtime. But uh, I hope you'll continue to stay with me here. As uh, and we're, I, I really feel like we're just starting to scratch the surface on uh, where this thing can go and. Um, you know, keep you updated on on any stuff going from here. Uh, we'll be live tomorrow night, Monday night, August 12th, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you'll join me on here. I do think I have another guest. Uh, it's not one of the athletes on campus, just uh, a guy I know, actually a former student of mine, who uh, double-checking with him. Hopefully, he's still going to be able to come on. We'll have some fun on here tomorrow night. I, He's a pretty knowledgeable guy when it comes to this stuff. So hopefully he'll everything will work out and he's still able to come on with me. If not, we'll uh, you know, the show will go on, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to join me on here as well. But uh, I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. 
This is Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel. You're everything sports channel for Tennessee athletics. Have a great rest of your Sunday. And last but most certainly not least, go Vols. (laughs) 